It's an honor to have you here with us. Uh, tell us what brings you to the United States. I know you're heading the Vadodara, which is actually, before it was called Bar Baroda, you know, the Ramakrishna mission over there. So tell yeah, us, actually uh, speaking, I was invited uh, by many organizations in connection with the 150th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. So, in very parts, various parts of USA, like New Jersey, Houston, Dallas, and uh, Seattle, and etc. But uh, along with that, there were a couple of programs. There was an international interfaith spirituality conference uh, that was in Cascadian Center, Mount Vernon, Washington. That was for about six days uh, near Seattle. And also today, for example, we had an interfaith uh, meeting at uh, Long Island, which was a very fruitful meeting. So about uh, apart from these two programs, most of the programs were in connection with the 150th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. That's right. And uh, we know that when Swamiji addressed the World Parliament of Religions in September 11, 1893, he got a standing ovation. You know, a monk, you know, from the greatest order, and then uh, articulately, articulately talking about the message of Vedanta, saying, Sisters and Brothers of America, that itself you know, filled everybody's heart with joy. Sisters and brothers of America, it fills my heart with joy, unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us. I mean, that line, I mean, it still gives us goosebumps how yeah. you put it out. So, Swamiji, tell us, 150 years later, you know, what is the relevance of Swami Vivekananda's message to the world, not just to the Indian community? Yeah, sure, sure. You know, uh the communication technology has undergone tremendous transformation. The world has been united as never before because of the communication technology. That's right. And now they say it is a global village. And globalization has come to stay at least on the economic front. But uh, we find that global peace is yet to emerge. Right. Why global peace is not coming is because of the uh, no uh, lack of harmony between various faiths lack of harmony between various civilizations, there is a clash of civilizations and that is why we can uh, have the fruits of globalization only we can have only when we have global civilization. Global civilization will emerge only when we have the interfaith harmony and we have harmony among various communities and various nations. It is in this context that Swami Vivekananda's message of harmony of religions is so very relevant as you just now are talking about the Chicago Parliament religions. Swami Vivekananda delivered his historic speech on 11 September 1893. And there he also told that bigotry, sectarianism, and fanaticism have long possessed this beautiful earth mm -hmm. and drenched it often and often with blood and sent the whole civilizations, all nations to despair. But for this, our humanity would have been far advanced than it is now. But their time has come and I fervently pray that the bell that tolled this morning in honor of this convention may be the death knell of all sorts of fanatism, of all sorts of persecution, whether with the pen or with the sword, and in soon there will be harmony and peace. This is what he desired. But we did not take the message as we should have taken. Mind you, that was also 9-11. And exactly after 108 years, there was another 9-11 because of fanaticism. So we will have to say goodbye to fanaticism. So today, the message of Swami Vivekananda is much more relevant when we are talking about harmony of religions. We are now talking about globalization. Thousands of years ago, in our Indian spiritual culture, it was Vasudeva Kutumbakam. It was told that the whole world is one. And that is why Swami Vivekan, when he told the Americans, sisters and brothers of America, he was talking from his heart because he really took all the brothers and sisters as real sisters and brothers. And that's why he touched the hearts of Americans. So this is the message of universal brotherhood and the harmony of religions that we need very much now. Yeah. So um, tell us, you know, you talked about 9-11 and then he also spoke on September. And so we can always talk about, you know, we talked about global civilization, which is lacking somewhere in a global world because of the clash of, um, you know, faiths and uh, religions. 
yeah, we talk about peace and yet we're not getting the peace. Tell us, um, you know, about your organization in Vadodara and how you are, you know, bringing in the message of Ramakrishna Mission and Swamiji. Yeah. You see, Ramakrishna Mission was started by Swami Viveka in 1897. Yeah. For basically three reasons. Number one. Right. To yes. spread the message of harmony of religions and that is why any monk or any lay member wanting to become a member of organization has to give declaration in writing that he or she will accept all religions as equally to and will have respect towards all religions. Right. And we have been observing the birthdays of Jesus Christ, of Mahavir, of Buddha, of Prophet Muhammad, uh, not only Prophet Muhammad that is Eid. All these celebrations of various faiths we are having in our British branch centers. Right. So that is the way we are spreading the message of interfaith harmony. And second is Sri Swami Vikan said of service of humanity, mm -hmm. service of God in man. Right. That is also we are trying to do, service of God in man. So we have various hospitals. Yes. We see the slide of Swamiji over here, you know, when he addressed the world. Yeah, yeah, parliament that is the religions. parliament yes. religions. Right. That is when he addressed the parliament religions. And then he gave the message of harmony of religions, which is very relevant. Right. And he also gave the message of uh, uh, the serving of God in man, right. which is also very relevant right. because at present so many people are suffering from poverty yes. and sickness. So he said, why not, why not worship God in man, in sick people and in poor people? Of course, you may worship God in temples, churches, mosques. There's nothing wrong in that. Sure. But here is the living God present. Right. So why not? Why, why, to, why to go to dig a well by the side of the Ganges, yes. by the side of the river? Right. Here is the living God. Right. So worship them first. So that was the message which Ramakrishna Mahesh is trying to um, put into practice through various hospitals, various dispensaries, right. uh, educational institutions, tribal and rural development project and all right. that. Right. Now, uh, I know that, uh, and, and this is what you're keeping the message alive of Swamiji, whether it's charity, whether it's service, whether it's oneness and peace and unity, and that's what your uh, your center is doing. Now tell us, uh, we have a lot of centers of the uh, Ramakrishna mission over here. Yeah, yeah, we have in United States 13 centers mm -hmm. uh, spread all over USA, uh, including two centers in New York. Uh, so they are also working for the interfaith harmony and also uh, there are many spiritual activities. Right. And spiritual culture. So they're like almost uh, 173 centers all around the world. So they have 173 centers all over the world. 13 in the 13 United, States. United States. And two in New York itself. Two in New York itself. I see. Yeah. So if anybody wants to know which city you know is closest to them for the center, they can always check the website and take a website. It out. I will tell you one website that is RKM uh, Vadodra. RKM HQ dot org will give the headquarters of our, our Ramakrishna's headquarters which will give the complete details. Of course in our Vadodara website also we have given the uh, list of all the branch centers including their individual websites in yes. our website rkmvadodara.com. I see. So Swamiji tell us uh, you know we are talking about Swami Vivekananda's message and keeping it alive right on the 150th birth anniversary. Tell us what's your mission in life right now? Well, my mission in life is nothing dif different from the uh, mission uh, uh, of Swami Vivekan because I, when I saw that Swami Vivekan started Ramakrishna mission basically with two objectives that is trying to achieve perfection in life by serving humanity. That is my mission in life and I was very much attracted to the teaching of Swami Vivekan and his particular articulation. Uh, on 4 July 1902, Swami Vivekananda gave up his body in meditation. But much before that, he had told Eric Hammond very mortal words. He said, it may be that I shall find it good to get outside of this body, to cast it off like a disused garment. Mm -hmm. But I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere uh -huh. until the world shall know that it is one with God. Well, his words are still strong over still here. Still strong and today very relevant. Us. Each and every person, individual has to reach divinity and he was also asked to give the essence of his message. He said, my ideal indeed can be put into a few brief words. That is to preach unto mankind their divinity within and how to make it manifest in every moment of their life. Mm -hmm. So that is our mission, to manifest the divinity ourselves and help others to manifest the divinity. But 
through various service projects by serving God in man. Yeah, serving God in man is And of course important. through four yeah. yogas, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga and Karma Yoga. Right. That is through meditation, prayer, unselfish service and positive thinking. Right. That is so very important these days because many times, you know, we live in such a divisive world, we get depressed and we lose our balance in yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's when the scriptures that's really where, help us you out. see, where if we practice, you are talking about relevance, there is one relevance, harmony of religions. Second relevance is many people are suffering from depression nowadays, they are having stress, their stress management has become a very important subject, most of the people are having tension. It is the age of tension. That's right. It is at this stage where Swami Vivekan's message of harmony of four yogas becomes very relevant because when we practice these four yogas, not only that it gives us eternal happiness and peace, but it also gives happiness and peace in everyday life, which is very, very important. And it will help us to overcome our depression or tension. It will give us mental strength because Swami Vivekan's message was basically the message of strength, physical, mental, intellectual, moral, and spiritual strength. That is what Swamiji talked about. Swamiji, tell us, uh, you know, you've come here to the United States. What has been your impression of the West? Well, this is my second time that I have come. In 2010 also I had come and was very happy to see United States. Beautiful roads. <laughs> Everything is big here, you know. Big roads, big cars, big trucks. Even the cup, coffee cup is very big. <laughs> it is like a drum for us. Right. We take very small cup. So everything is big and big heart of course, very free society and I like that. Particularly I like the commitment of the people and also uh, the honesty and truthfulness which we have to learn and the punctuality, the time, everything we have to learn from the West, from America. Of course one thing is there that America has also to now, uh, of course it is coming up but uh, it will have to adopt spirituality, which Swami Vivekan said. If the people want peace of mind, man cannot live by bread alone. So, we, we of course we must have luxuries in life, we must advance, we must have economic development. Along with that spiritual development is a must. And that is what I thought in America, many people they told me, outwardly they are happy, but inside they are having a lot of problems. They uh, told me privately, so I could understand that of course there are very beautiful roads, clean roads, cleanliness, neatness, everything is there. But still there is something lacking and that is spirituality. And that will come by the message of Swami Vivekananda. But Swamiji, tell us, uh, do you feel that uh, it's not just spirituality, is not just lacking in the West, it's also lacking in the country where Swami Vivekananda was yeah, born? Yeah, sure. No, I agree with you. I think we, <laughs> we want it more now. <laughs> But at the same time... Because they are aping the West too. Yeah, it is a, there is a lot of uh, westernization there. And sometimes I say that we are more westernized than the West now. Yes, exactly. Particularly our youth. Yes. <laughs> they are having blind imitation of Western materialistic culture. In one way it is good that it is broadening up the whole global culture is coming. But at the same time we should not forget the purpose of human life. And uh, that is the message of Vedanta that ultimately or for any religion for that matter is that we should not forget the divine principle inside That's right. and the purpose of life. Because as you said the purpose of life you know because uh, you know we get this body this is the highest form of creation yeah and and yet we do not use it the way for our purpose in life which right. is to find divinity if, in I, us. If I have to say scientifically if we want real success and fulfillment, not only IQ and EQ, but SQ is also needed. Absolutely. Spiritual caution, spiritual Absolutely. intelligence, yeah. and that will come only when we start asking what is the purpose of my life, the aim of my life. Yeah. And that is the message of all the religions and spirituality. Absolutely. Swamiji, what would be your message uh, uh, to the you know community over here, to the West over here? Swami Vivekananda came with, I have a message for the West. What is your message? Message of Swami, what I have to give the same message that Swami Vivekan gave. Yes. And he gave a gift, you know, which is yet unopened. Wow. <laughs> there is a beautiful book by Elena Stark, The Gift Unopened. Swami Vivekan gave, came, for the first time, he did not give in India. He came to America and gave the gift of the nectar of Vedanta, of oh. four yogas. Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Karma Yoga. These are the lectures he delivered in New York in 1894, after his parliament religions. But some of the other, we have not yet opened the gift. Now this is the right time at Swami Vivekan 150th birth anniversary. I will tell the Americans to open that gift box and Use these it. four, four yes. yogas, practice these four yogas and try to get 
uh, along with uh, material uh, wealth, of course we must have wealth, along with that what we need is mental peace and that will come by practicing for yogas. Yeah, that's so very important as you mentioned, you know, the, we have the emotional quotient, the intellectual quotient, in some way we're lacking the spiritual quotient and um, that's what Swamiji you're yeah, talking about. Okay. To combine both, you know, yes. mm -hmm. Sri Ramakrishna says empty stomach, no religion. Mm -hmm. So we give them milk. At the same time, men cannot live by bread alone. That's so right. we give them snacks, bread, milk, at the same time, we give them spiritual education, right. so value okay. education. Yeah. We teach them how the values are important, yeah. cultural and spiritual values are given along yeah. with And that. then you've seen those outcomes from these kind of We uh, have schools. got very good, very good this one outcome and I am very sure the children whom we are now training are going to become enlightened citizens. In fact, we are already getting it because we started some of the projects much earlier. Now those who are becoming youth, they are becoming our volunteers for taking up. That is the best part so of it. the best role models. So the oh, alumni yes. becomes the you know source fund yeah. of uh, funding yes. source and all and source of this one. So it so is they, give, uh, they they come out come for help. Now that is the training that we have given that you don't. We are now helping you, but now you have to help the humanity. Right. You have to serve humanity. So they get a first an experience and. Yeah. Um, not only that, but inspiration. Yeah, and in just a few years, India will have the youngest population in the whole world. Yeah. So, this is a time that we need to so impart this, some good this spiritual message of yes. Swami Vivekanand, yeah. he, he told Maharaja of Mysore, my dear prince, this life is short. The vanities of this world are transient. They alone live, who live for others. Yeah. The rest are more dead than alive. Mm. This is the message we give to them. And for example, I was in uh, in tribal belt, Ranchi, Jharkhand in, in India for 10 years and we had a tribal development project and the trainees who come there, within 6 weeks their lives get transformed, they learn about agronomy, horticulture, animal husbandry, apart from that, this spiritual culture and when they go back to villages, they start clubs, night uh, schools for the children. Wow. They become volunteers. That's wonderful. It's a, it's a snowballing effect. Absolutely. And, and Swamiji the, did talk about Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Badanti. Yeah. Truth is one, sages call it by different names. We that still have not realized Vedas, that. Which, so of the Vedas, uh, Swamiji talked about it. Yeah. Ramakrishna not only Ram Krishna about practiced it. in his life, yes. he practiced various religions by turn. This is in the Rig Veda, but we never really actually internalized this whole thing. And we we internalized it. earlier, but there was a period, <laughs> some period, short period yes. in between where we forgot about it or we somehow the but then Sri Ramakrishna came in our own times right. he practiced very religious by turn right and that is why Swami Vivekan said his life was parliament of religion itself correct because he practiced all religion and then he said as many face so many paths based Absolutely. on his experience and that is why Swami Vivekan with all great conviction Right. confidence he could give the message of harmonious religion yeah. the parliament religions Absolutely. in chicago and, and then, then only we can tell the relief even for the tsunami right. or what happened now and you will see the swami is doing the work That's and good. that is what right. is most right. impressive well, thank you so much uh, dr badra shah uh, past chairman and past president and now the trustee of share care foundation and of course swami ji swami nikleshwara anandar ji who is the head of the vadodara center of the ramakrishna mission in india and so thankful for you to have come here and talked about the impact that you're making with the spiritual quotient all over. You know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm thank Renee. You. Thank you so much for watching the Renee Report. Thank, thank you. you.